Growing up in rural Germany, I heard many stories. My Oma would tell me all sorts of stories, from ones about her life during World War II to folk legends that she had heard when she was growing up. Her house always had an overwhelming smell of incense and perfume, however, I didn't mind too much. I always loved getting to hear such stories from a seasoned storyteller. Until I heard the story of the matchstick man. My Oma told me the story somewhere between 1975 and 1980. A long time ago in Germany, there was a soldier. One day, as the soldier was out on patrol, he saw a man standing at the edge of the forest clearing. The soldier calls out, Hey, you there! What is your business here? But he gets no answer. He starts moving closer to the man when he starts to notice red in the grass. As he gets closer, the man turns around, revealing a bloody knife in his grip and two missing eyeballs, which are on the ground in front of him. The soldier also notices a smell of cringed hair and burnt sulfur. The man grabs the soldier by the shoulders and starts to speak. But it is revealed that the man's tongue is also gone. However, the soldier begins to hear the man's voice inside his head. What was he saying? I'm about to tell you. Listen. The man says, In the woods and in your home, never, ever be alone. In the night or in the day, he will never go away, though you'll try as hard as you can. You can't escape. The matchstick man. And the man pulled out a revolver, stuck it under his chin, and shot himself. The soldier starts screaming for help. Not for the man, but for himself. Because, as he stared into the man's empty eye sockets, he saw him. He was tall and thin. Impossibly thin. His hands were long and bony, too. He was as black as the night. He had no eyes or mouth, but he did have sunken in pits where his eyes would be. His head was not round at all. It looked like the way the head of a match does after you strike it. Suddenly, at night, the soldier would become restless. He would have visions of himself doing the most evil of acts. Every dream would end with the face of the man he met in the woods, combined with that terrible chant which haunted him. Some nights... He would wake to see the matchstick man standing over his bed. Just watching him, it was as if he was saying, We can go. We can go whenever you want. I can make the visions end if you come with me. The soldier would always wake his bunkmates of screams. I won't go with you, you fucking monster, and the like. However, the soldier could see the match. However, only the soldier could see the matchstick man. He would say, can't you see him in the corner of the room? which his fellow soldiers would always call him crazy and delirious, but soon, other soldiers started seeing him. 
It got to the point where no one was sleeping. It would go for days at a time, with nothing but a few minutes of fitful rest in between the long hours spent evading the matchstick man. The soldier lived like this for years, even after he was discharged from the army. He didn't tell his family for the longest time, because he figured out that the matchstick man was only able was only visible to people who heard about him. Eventually, that soldier committed suicide one night in his shed so that no one could see him do it. It is said that the matchstick man watched him the entire time up until he pulled the trigger. This was unlike any other story my Oma had ever told me. I was speechless that she even knew such a story. All I could say was, I guess I need to get back to work now, before heading back out to the barn. As I worked, I realized my Oma was telling me about my grandfather. He was also a soldier, and several years before, he also committed suicide in their shed. That night, I had a dream. It was me, alone in the woods. The smell of burning matches plagued the entire forest. Out of nowhere, a family appeared. There was a mom, a dad, and a very young girl. They were saying, Who are you? What do you want? Leave us alone, please. I looked down and saw a can of gasoline in my hand and a lighter. I tried as hard as I could, but I couldn't stop myself from pouring it on them and then throwing the lit lighter at them. I couldn't stop from watching as they were burned alive and they screamed, Why? 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 I couldn't stop myself from laughing as the skin was falling off of them. And then I woke up. And he... He was there. I couldn't scream. I could only watch. Then he spoke to me. Without having to say any words at all. He just held out his hand as a silent offer for me to take it. Before I knew, I found myself reaching up and grabbing it. Suddenly the matchstick man spoke again, but this time I heard his voice. Do you know what he told me? He told me that the only way to stop the visions was to tell the world about him. He said that if I did, I wouldn't be plagued by those horrible visions anymore. It made me think. But I don't have a way to tell many people, and I think they will all think I am crazy. To which he replied, After a while, they won't think you're the crazy one. And just like that, I was back in my bed. The visions did not stop for a while, because I didn't want anyone else to have to suffer through them. But eventually it became too much. I started to spread the word of the matchstick man. That is what this post is about. I knew that here... It would get the exposure so that I would never have to have one of those horrible dreams again. I'm sorry, but I can't take it anymore. Just do as I did and you'll be alright. I'll leave you with one final thought. 
do you smell something burning? 